Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Have you guys have ever been wowed by God? Yes. Where, yes, wow, that's cool. Where it's like, wow. <laughs> where God just did something crazy, you know, whether it was, you know, you really actually have a true fishing story or something, you know, he just blew you away. And maybe it's a simple sunrise, maybe all of a sudden you got a promotion or you got more money back on your tax returns. I don't know what it was, but he just kind of, wow, you knew it was the Lord. Same question or kind of a different question, but have you, have you ever wowed yourself where you look back and say, man, I was awesome? <laughs> Anybody ever done that? Like, yeah, where you caught, you know, maybe you caught a fish or you caught a break and you used the right lure or you caught a break or you caught that guy or you caught that gal. It's like, man, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm still in the game. I got it. <laughs> Anybody ever been there? Well, a few years ago, I was fishing with my grandson and, um, we were, I think we were in youth camp. I can't remember. There's a couple times this has happened already. But I was fishing with my grandson, and there was this particular camp. We called it Push Camp. We created it ourselves. It's called Pursuing Ultimate Spiritual Heights. So it was challenging because the first two days, um, we didn't provide any food for them. We split them up in groups, gave them 100 bucks, said, go to the Dollar General. You've got four days of being on this campus. The first two days, you can't, uh, uh, we're not going to provide any food. You're going to have to go in there and either buy the stuff that y'all want as a group or you're going to have to hunt for your own food. They had a fishing uh, pond and they had a, uh, some hogs out there. So some, one of them killed the hog and most of them just went fishing. It was awesome. <laughs> Anyways, that's not the point. The point is, yeah, you want to go to camp? <laughs> Send your kids to camp. Let's go kill a hog. Um, maybe that's not a good way to set up youth camp this year, but still, um, we so Hayden was fishing. He's sitting there and he was frustrated. I could tell he was frustrated, but Pope, they call me the Pope. Okay. It's a Popo, but in short, they just say the Pope. I've always wanted to be the Pope. I'm far from that. So I was sitting in the back watching him and I see his little heart getting discouraged. So I said, Hey, Hayden, what's up? What's going on? You'll see Hayden's, Hayden's right here. It actually was right here in this area, I think. But um, he goes, I can't catch any fish. He goes, man, everybody's catching fish. I can't catch any fish. Goes, There's something wrong. There's something wrong with this pole. Maybe I'm just not, I just can't do it. He's like, you can do it. I said, maybe, let me check out your reel. So I got his reel, and I knew the fish were biting. Other people were catching fish. And I could see his little thing moving, but he was just impatient. <laughs> He's, you know how it is, right? The young kid. So I said, here, take my pole, and he, and, you know, just to keep him occupied, and I grabbed his reel, and I threw it out there, and sure enough, there was a nice little bite, and I just tugged on it, and I set that hook, then I released it, just let it go, just went out there. And I said, Hayden, I think everything's okay, I'm sure you'll catch something. And I let him, I, I gave it to him, and I got my pole back, and I was just out there whistling, <laughs> just a few seconds, Pope, I got one, I got one. So I said, reel it in, reel it in. So he's reeling this thing in, and sure enough, he has this awesome catch and he's smiling he goes man I did it I did it you know this is when he was a little kid little did he know that he caught a fish he didn't catch it he reeled in the fish that his pope had caught <laughs> that pope was back in the background working behind the scenes making sure that I would capture his heart and not let his heart get discouraged you know sometimes you just need to help people win right. isn't that the truth so good. Yeah. but you know God's a whole lot like that isn't it you know he's always behind the scene uh doing things that we don't even know. Sometimes we take credit for something, it's really the Lord doing some stuff. Yes. That's true. That's true. You know, you think you were that awesome, you, you caught that guy, you caught that girl, you, I married this gal. Man, it wasn't my good looks, yeah. even though it was pretty awesome, but still. <laughs> it, was, it was the Lord just reeling madly in, he goes, hey, this guy needs you for the rest of your life, okay? <laughs> so you'll be okay. And all this time, it's like, man, I got this. You know, I just, so she's way above my, you know, status or whatever. I was like, I couldn't believe that I, you know, captured somebody like Natalie. And I was thinking about this story. I was like, man, you know what? I never did. It had nothing to do with me. It was the Lord behind the scenes working on my behalf because it's been the most blessed, you know, blessing in my life to have a wife such as my wife, right? right. You know, God set the hook and reeled her in. Babe, it was, it was the Lord doing that. <laughs> okay. You were all captured and... Mesmerized. 
You thought it was my GTO? You thought it was my rush tickets. It was better than that. But, you know, the Lord is always working behind the scenes. As a matter of fact, the scripture, there's several scriptures, but it says, you do not, Jesus said it this way, you don't realize what's going on right now, but it, in time you'll understand, right? And there's so much that he, he's always behind the scenes. My father's always at his work to this very day. And, and Jesus said, I too am working. Well, the reason I'm setting you up this way is because when I was thinking about this particular story, I thought about how crazy of a story it is, but when you read it, you don't see it, but you realize that God was behind the scene doing something bigger than what we see when we just read it right there. Actually, he was doing what I was trying to do is capture Hayden's heart. He's trying to capture your heart with the lesson, with the truth. I said that we're looking at four stories in this particular series uh, on fishtails that connect with four commands that Jesus has that will challenge every true disciple of Jesus. And today we're going to take a look at this other story right here in Matthew's Gospel, the 17th chapter. If you have your notes, it's, in your, it's on your app, so you want to take a look at that. And this idea is so mission critical as a follower of Jesus. You can't master this particular lesson today. You can't master it just once you read it, once you get it, once you get the aha moment. It takes time. It just takes time because you're going you're gonna, to you're, you're gonna see this over and over in your life. You can't do it after one sitting. You've got to renew your mind to it. It's like mastering, you know, um, uh, a tasty fish or cooking good fish. You ever done that? And the first time you did it, it was like they tasted it. Now you threw it away. You gave it to the dogs or something. It takes time to get that recipe, right? They say actually that tasty fish have uh, to swim three different times, once in the water once in butter, and once in wine. Isn't that the truth? So the title of this morning's message is Catch and Release. Catch and Release. Matthew's Gospel, the 17th chapter. It's the story of Peter fishing. And um, it's when Jesus told him to go out. He caught a fish with a coin in its mouth. You remember that story? We'll take a look at it. And the whole reason is to pay his taxes. Isn't that cool? It's tax season. So let's take a look at it. It's Matthew 17. Now, I have to give you a background uh, for this. Jesus is towards the end of his life, and he is about to set his disciples on a mission. And so he don't have too much time left. He's already spent a couple of years plus, you know, discipling, mentoring them, um, taking things out of their old thinking ways, downloading some of the things that the Father wanted him to download in their heart. And so... Um, He's, he's trying to set them up so that before they go, they capture some truth that they needed to be established in. So, in, in, and as a matter of fact, Matthew wrote, Matthew's the only one that wrote this particular story. And I thought it was interesting that it has to do with taxes because Matthew was a tax collector before he came to the Lord. As a matter of fact, when you take a look at the writing in Matthew's gospel, you'll see something that you don't see anywhere else in scripture. You'll see the term kingdom of heaven. Because he wanted us to elevate our thinking and to, to, to think about things, think about things, think about things that are more heavenly minded than earthly good. That gospel, the kingdom of heaven, was used 32 times in the scripture. You know where they were all used at? In Matthew's gospel. Isn't that cool? And so uh, Matthew 16, right before the 17th chapter, you see um, early on when, you know, we talked about it last week, when Jesus calls Peter to become a fisher of men. Matthew 16, all of a sudden, Peter gets a revelation. Who do you say that I am? You remember that? And Peter said, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And Jesus tells him, he goes, man, flesh and bone has not revealed that to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed that to you. Amen. You heard that from the Lord. You heard that from your Father. And he established some truth there. If you go forward, um, right before this story, Jesus takes him up to what they call the transfiguration and there he, he, they hear the Father, the Heavenly Father, speak, this is my beloved Son. And so they, 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 they see the Father. They, their, their height, their thinking is are, are, it's getting elevated. And then the story comes, and sandwiched in between, uh, well, there's another story that follows right after this, and that's when the disciples were saying, who's greatest in the kingdom? And remember, Jesus takes this little child. You know, I was, I was reading that the other day, and somebody said that. The little children that he got, that he 
sat on were, was a little child that, um, how do you describe it? Well, it was more, it was a child, it was children who were like, they had Down syndrome, like a Down syndrome type of a child. And he, and he picks these little kids up and he puts them on his lap. He goes, this is what your heart needs to be like. And sandwiched in between the transfiguration up there in the mountain and down here on the floor with this little child is this particular fishing story. So let's take a look at it right there and then just draw out some two truths that I want to talk about. When they came to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? Bill, why was that so funny? (laughs) I'm just kidding. You know it. You know it. And he said, yes. Peter was like, yeah. Peter didn't know what he was talking about. It's almost like they're saying, hey, um, does Jesus pay the temple tax? And probably thinking, well, I need it right now. (laughs) And Peter's just like, yeah, we got it. I got you. I'll be back. So uh, when he came into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Peter? What do you think, Simon? Simon was Peter's name before he came to the Lord, right? Simon has to do with his old way of thinking, his earthly ways. Peter was so crazy, right? He was total Mexican. He would take out on people. He would just <laughs> cut people's ears off, and he's just crazy. Anyway, so he just, he just talked a whole lot. Just whatever was there just came out. And so he goes, what do you think, Simon? From whom does the king take? Now, here's the story. Whom does the king take taxes on the earth? From their sons or from the strangers? And Peter said to him, from strangers. And Jesus said to him, then the sons are free, right? Because when, when a king is receiving taxes, who does he go to? Do he, does he go to his own family? He says, no, he doesn't go to his own family. He goes to those that are out there, the strangers that are out there. Strangers, when you take a look at that scripture, it's those that are outside of the household. He goes, nevertheless, <laughs> there was a lesson there. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and, you know, they, they used, remember, I told you last week, they had boats and they had nets, and they would do fishing this, this way. You know, the, the fish would come to their net, and then they would get a bunch of fish. Well, this time, he says, take that pole, put a hook on it, throw it out there, and you're going to catch a fish. He goes, take the fish that comes up first, and when you have opened its mouth, you're going to find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and for you. You know, it would have taken... Peter, uh, I think it was two shekels or something like that. It would have taken, it's like a two days wage, worth of wage that they would have to do to pay uh, for one person's tax. And when he went fishing, he not only paid his, but he also paid the master's. So that's four days of wages. You know, in in one sense, the earthly, our flesh, we want to work for our stuff. But Jesus said, if you follow me, man, there's grace for some of that. But there's two lessons that I want to share with you this morning, um, and that's why I entitled it Catch and Release. There's something you need to catch, and there's something you need to release. I want you to bury that thing. There's something you need to what? Catch. And there's something you need to release. Okay? So let's take a look at that and just kind of hope that you just catch that in your heart. Catch. What do we need to catch? That you're a son and not a stranger. Right. That's right. You need to learn how to think higher. Is what he was trying to help him understand. It's like, hey, you see yourself. That's why you get all crazy and you try to do stuff on your own. You're, you're earthly minded and I need you to be, I'm going to pull you in and I need you to get and elevate your thinking. It needs to get higher to a place where that's gonna, you're going to be established in that rather than your own efforts. Does that make sense? That is a struggle, friends, that we face as followers of Christ. We just sang the song a minute ago. I'm a child of God, not forsaken. Well, how many times do we feel forsaken? How many times do we feel defeated? How many times do we, you know, feel the emotion and the tug of the moment that the, the, the gravitational pull is downward? And he wants to elevate our sights. He wants our thinking to get higher because as a son, there's certain ways that we need to think as sons 
If, if you continue to think like a slave, you'll never receive what God has for you as a son. Does that make sense? <clears throat> it's taken me 37 years still as follower of Jesus, and he's still hammering me with this. Not hammering like, I'm going to beat this down on you, but he's constantly reminding me, son, think higher. As a matter of fact, the last thing he so told me, I was telling the staff the other day, quit limiting me. It's like, man, I thought I was doing good. <laughs> There's so much more. Quit limiting me, right? Think higher. If you don't think like a son, you'll act like a slave. I was reminded just a while ago, and I wrote this down in John, the fifth chapter. He goes up to a man who had been in an infirmity for 38 years. Tied to this thing, this bondage, this, this mindset, a victim mindset, whatever it was, it was an infirmity. Some of us have been having this type of a mindset and uh, thinking of ourselves as a stranger rather than a son for 38 years, 37 years, 50 years. And you know what Jesus, how Jesus addresses that? He comes up to him and he asks him, do you want to be made well? How many of us want to be made well from that type of thinking, that type of lifestyle? He wants to elevate your eye. You have to catch. You have to think higher. You have to think of yourself as a son and not a stranger. It's like you don't want that rejection mindset as a fisherman. You ever seen a fisherman that with a rejection mindset? They're not going fishing. They're just going to go complaining. I never catch nothing. It's the stupid fish. It's the weather. It's something. Whatever it is. I don't know what they say. It's like, come on, bro. Let's go catching. Let's do this. Like, I had no reservations that whenever I would throw that out there, I was going to get something. I was like, Lord, we got to teach this kid something. Come on, help me out. And I love how God answers those kind of prayers. Yes. When, you, when, you, when you're in a position that you have eternity in mind and you're doing it for the bigger picture, God does crazy, supernatural yes. does. things on your behalf because it's not about you. It's something way bigger than you. Right. And if we get a hold of that, Man, I'm just praying that we get a hold of that. God will do some amazing things, not only through you, but through us as a church in this community. You're a victor. You're not a victim. Victim, Amen? You, you don't fight for victory. You, you fight from victory. Why? Because you're a son of God. You're no longer a slave. You're a child of God. And Peter, he always tended to respond in his flesh. Peter was like, ready, fire, aim. It's like Joel. <laughs> Sorry, Joel. I'm just saying. And that's why he said, Simon he goes, from whom does the king take taxes on the earth? From sons or from strangers? And Peter answers the right way. He says, from strangers. He goes, then the sons are exempt. He goes, listen, that's the temple tax. My father owns the temple. That's, that's mine. It's ours. I'm his son. I don't, I don't need to pay taxes. As a matter of fact, you don't need to pay taxes because you're a son as well. You're a part of this household. Does that make sense? So Peter's like, cool. Can I keep that money then? No, that's the second part. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But he was trying to help him understand, hey, think higher. You know, there's some things that you and I need to establish in our hearts. You and I are sons. John, the first chapter in the 12th verse, it says, but as many as received them, to them he gave them the right to become children of God. Amen? Yes. Ephesians, the second chapter, says it this way. It goes, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. A.W. Towser says this. There's a quote that says, a low view of God is the cause of a hundred lesser evils. But a high view of God is the solution to 10,000 temporal problems. Our biggest problem is our small view of God. Isn't that so true? Man, I love that quote. So here's the, here's the common challenge that you and I will face over and over again. And it's a truth that God wants to establish in our hearts. Is that you're a son. You're not a stranger. I'm not saying that so that you can have pride. I'm not saying I just need to establish that truth in your heart because if he gave us what he gave us when we were his enemies, if he gave us his best, which was his own son, 
while we were sinners, while we were outsiders, how much more does he want to do as a son? Isn't that the truth? Natalie and I lived in poverty for, well, we're still living, no, we're not. We used to live, you know, at man apartments. We would get government housing and we did, what do you call that stuff, babe? WIC, all that stuff. We didn't know any better. We were just, man, I was a guy that, you know, I couldn't afford cable. So I'd climb up the pole and screw that thing on old days, screw that thing on and just put my line down in the pole, take it to the house, throw it inside the window. Cable TV, I had, all, I had cable all the time. And when they found out, and they did, they said, like, hey, what's that cable going? I was like, I don't know, because it was here before I moved in. When I found out, I had another friend, and then they would screw in those little deals. So you just buy those on the side. Now, what I'm saying is that I used to live that way. I was a very, very good, anyways, it was bad, but I was good at it. I would take the insurance cards, make copies, Photoshop them, and put my name, put the right dates on them. I'd go turn that in. It was like, it was, I should have been in jail several times. But that's the way I was thinking. All of a sudden, we come to Christ. I was like, I can't live this way anymore. Right. And all of a sudden, little by little, this truth was getting established in my heart. I was like, son, I got way more than you could ever imagine. Amen. Trust me. I'll provide for you. I'll take care of you. And so, I, I, and I've shared this, I've shared so many stories with you guys, but there's so many things. This recent one, somebody was just asking me while we were in the restroom, I was just washing up. Someone goes, hey, you got any good fishing stories? I said, man, I got too many. And they seem like they're all false <laughs> or tales. He goes, but I'm telling you, we were down fishing in Cabo a while back. Somebody bought me, okay, we're not taking the church money to go over there, okay, just a FYI. <laughs> they bought me this trip. And so I went with four guys. And uh, we took off, and we were marlin fishing. And it was fun, man. And, and mahi mahi, we caught a bunch of mahi mahi. We bought a bunch of, I think we bought, we caught, not bought. Uh, we caught seven of them, I think, six or seven of them. Easy. And so when the guys, you know, we were taking turns, and I was just blown away at just the, the nature of it. I was just blown away. And the guys, they would, they would fight 15, 20, 30 minutes for their deal, for their marlin. And then he goes, Marcus, it's your turn. So I had to get on the seat, strap up, you know, if I caught something. So all of a sudden, I catch this marlin. And, man, I sit on that seat, strap it, and I'm starting to reel it in. The fight began, and no less than when I just started reeling it in, there was no more fight. And that thing just reeled all the way in to the boat. It was, it was probably, it was almost the width of the, of, the, of the back of the boat. They got it, took the hook off, threw it back in. I'm like, where was the fight at? Right? So all these guys are sweating and fighting. And then in the middle of all that, a big old whale jumps, you know, swims over, the tail's over. I happened to take a picture of it. I should have brought that. I didn't think I was going to share that. And then the school of fish was going, I mean, it was just like, all this was going on in just a few seconds. And I'm like overwhelmed. I was like, what is going on here? I'm freaking out. It's like, and that man, the captain goes, I've never, ever seen this before in my whole life. And the Lord spoke. He goes, I did that for you. You're my son. I wasn't worried about fishing. These guys were just, they were loving fishing. I'm, I'm, I love fishing, but it's not like, like they love fishing. You got guys that really love fishing. I was just blown away at the beauty, and God honored right. me just wanting to experience that, and it was just so powerful, but as a son, there's so many things that he wants to show you and help you, but we have to think like, because we'll never, we don't think like it, we'll never see it, we'll never see it, if you don't think higher, you'll still continue to live and think like a slave, does that make sense, yes. did you catch that? Well, there's another thing that you have to do is not only catch something, you have to release something. And the hardest thing that there is to do is to catch a fish and release it. I never understood, why are you letting that thing go? I'm not a fisherman, so I didn't understand. I was like, come back. Well, the reason you let them go is because if, so maybe there's limitations, maybe it's illegal, there's a certain size or whatever. And you could lose your license. They would revoke your license if you do that. 
Well, the same is true in the kingdom of God. If you don't learn how to release, you know, we said catch, you have to think higher, think like a son and not a stranger, but release, you have to live lower. And what I mean by living lower is that just because you have privileges, uh, you don't always have to use them if it's going to offend others. That's why Jesus said, but so that we don't offend anyone else, go out there and, and I think Jesus was having fun. He probably, probably could have got the money from Judas or whatever. He goes, you know what? I'm going to try something. He put him out there because he was a fisherman, a professional one, but he didn't give him a net or a boat. He said, hey, you do what you do, but I'm going to do what I do. And that, that's another story. That's another lesson. Like if you do your part, God will do his part. It didn't make sense. Take the hook, get the pole, throw it out there. You're going to catch a fish. There's going to be a coin in his mouth. It's enough to pay your taxes. So we don't offend them. Let's take care of business here. It's not that Peter needed to pay his taxes, but Jesus knew that he was about to leave. And more than paying taxes, Jesus needed a good reputation. He needed to have change in his pocket. He needed to have influence. He needed to have a, a, a place so that when he was gone, they would still hear so if you revoke your license, you can't fish anymore, technically. Well, in the kingdom of God, if you're full of pride and your license gets revoked, you can't fish for men anymore. Their hearts won't be open. Why? Because you're full of pride. Like, I'm a son of God. I don't need that. You ever heard people like that? God's my father. I'm blessed beyond whatever. They just have this real cocky attitude. I'm like, bro, just shut up, please. <laughs> and it's true, it is true, but it's offensive. When we leverage the privileges that God's given us for our own sake. Bigger mindset. You got to release, learn how to live lower. Nevertheless, we offend them, go fishing. He needed change in his pocket. Humility is a key. Pride is the first chapter in the book of failure. Let me share this quote, and I've got I to release you, okay? <laughs> Jesus never, put that other one under. Jesus never compromised the truth. Watch this. Take a picture of this. Jesus never compromised truth in order to keep people from being offended. He didn't compromise that truth. People were offended because of his words. Well, they were offended. But Jesus never caused offense by asserting his own rights or privileges. Galatians, it reminds me of what Paul says. In Galatians, he says, For you are called to freedom, brothers, but don't use your freedom as an opportunity for your flesh, but through love serve one another. Amen. Amen. Remember this. Remember this. Loving and serving one another takes priority over your own freedom in Christ. Eternal mindset. You know, put that, let that be settled in your heart. And you'll experience things that you would have never experienced if you do it. So you need to catch something and you need to release something. Think higher, live lower. Amen? I got to release you to go. But before I do, here's your take home real quick. Well, and it's in your notes. Go fishing. So when you're out there, it's spring break. It's a lot of stuff to do. But I really encourage you to think about a couple of things. One, when you're out there, see yourself as a son not a stranger. Maybe you're out there with your children, you're out there with your wife. Leverage that as a son or as a daughter. See how you can coach your children, how you can coach your grandchildren into thinking higher. Maybe yourself. Maybe catch yourself. Catch your things like, man, I don't know if that's going to... You know, when we started the church, I didn't have any income coming in. And I said, you know what? In the natural now, let's sell the house. Let's do this. Let's get rid of that. I'm out there mowing the lawn. And I'm thinking this way. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you know, quit thinking that way. He goes, think higher. Trust me, I'll take care of you. And so I went inside kind of happy. I was like, man, we're not going to sell the house. We're just going to stay right here. The Lord will take care of us. And we'll start this church. We'll obey what he told us to do. And God will provide. Listen, God is my witness. After I said that, we had a guy drive in our driveway. And he has an $800 check. I didn't know what he had. He goes, hey, listen. I was thinking about you, and the Spirit of the Lord told me to come over and give you something. Man, may, may God bless you. I had another guy come in, gave me a $1,200 check. 
It was just the craziest thing. It's like getting fed by ravens. And all I did was obey. Think higher. I'll take care of you. Listen, I could sit here the rest for the rest of the hour and let's go grab some barbecue, come back. I'll tell you story after story of how God has provided for my wife and I because of his goodness. It's not that we were good. It's that he's good. And his goodness, get emotional thinking about it. There's so many things that he wants to show us. You know, the privileges that we have, you know, the, the extra stuff that we have, you know, he'll take care of that for you. The dreams that you have, you don't have to fulfill them in your own effort. He put those desires inside of you. He's going to fulfill those things. If you'll, you'll, I guarantee it won't be, that road will not be accomplished without faith and trust in him. I'm looking at Ivan right here. He had a dream. I said, brother, what's in your heart? He has a dream to start a truck business. It was in his heart. I was hoping he would say ministry because I wanted to hire him. So I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You didn't know that. I don't know if you knew that or not. You would have been on staff here. But you would have been miserable. He told me his dream about starting this business and explained to me. I said, I'm in, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to press you until you said, you can't do this without faith. So I, I, I told him, I said, I, I'm going to pay for your branding. So I talked to this guy, and they put all the branding together, his logo, all this stuff. said, here, I'm going to pay for that. You take care of that. That's the beginning of the dream. Go for it. And you're almost there, right? You're almost there. There's so many things. If you think higher, there's so many things that God will blow you away with. It's just absolutely amazing. But go fishing this week. One, think higher. Think like a son. And live lower. Use your freedom to serve other individuals. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessing.